Hi, 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 hi. Hey, to find who you are as an artist and to be able to release more music, you need to finish tracks consistently. But the issue is that we might technically be able to finish a track, but we might not like it in the end, or it's just not our style. So in this video, I will share my secret formula to make music you actually love. I just finished my new single, Are You Okay? It was made part of Genelec's 45th year celebration challenge called Harmony Tracks. So if you want to make a track you love and also have a chance to win a pair of Genelec Raw 8330As, then check out how to take part in this competition from the link down below. Okay, let's get into the formula now. So this formula is created so that it forces you to finish a song that you actually love. Sometimes it might take a little bit longer. Sometimes you might need patience and time and resilience to actually get into the end of it. But if you do, you will have a song that you love in the end of it. I promise. So let me talk you through it. So we're going to start by your initial ideas. This is the sample sounds or even the demo you have created. Just the initial inspiration, whatever it is. So then you ask yourself, do you feel like all of the sounds fit together? Are all of them harmonically amazing together? If this answer is no, you will go to a step where you mute tracks and sounds one by one while listening to all of them together. So this is where you kind of assess what doesn't work together. After this, you will ask, do you feel like the sounds now fit together? If the answer is still no, you continue to remove unfitting sounds or you start adding stuff that maybe should fit in it. Maybe something that the track needs. Maybe explore samples, design new ones, try some quirky ideas. All these ideas, you just put them in there. Just put them in there. Just don't think about it. Just put things, ideas. Do you feel like the sounds fit together? If the answer is still no, remind yourself of your goal. If you wish to create a certain genre, study further its structure and characteristics. If you are not wanting to do one genre, then maybe just trying to learn something new, trying to learn new techniques, something that you just wanna explore with this track and try it with these sounds that you have created. Okay, so let's say the track seems ready to you now. You say, yeah, yeah. It seems like these sounds kind of fit together now. Now you're going to create the structure. So producing, composition, developing the track. Add all the aspects you think that are necessary. So example, arrangement, automation, transitions, tension, details, vocal details, all that stuff. Does the track seem ready to you? Let's say no. If you feel like the track should already be finished, but something does not just feel right, then try creating another version. So duplicate this session and start again. Feel like you're starting again with the material that someone is almost given to you, even though it's been you giving this material to yourself, but pretend that someone's just giving you this material. It's a new session, new start. Just remove things, add stuff, use these samples and just try to create a completely new track out of it. So if you say that the track does not still seem good for you, then you're gonna go back into production, composition, developing, or you can go back into any of these sections here. Example, uh, learning a little bit more or just removing stuff, adding stuff, whatever you feel comfortable. Obviously, I have created a route here that you can follow and that should do the trick. Let's say that it feels ready now. Then we're gonna go to the last bit, which is does the track make you feel something? The last bit is something that I overlooked for years. And this is something that I have now tried to learn to embrace. So I feel like example, are you okay? I created three, four different versions of it because it didn't make you, me feel. Technically, it was there. Technically, it sounded great. It had all the transitions, tension, all these things, but something was just not hitting me. It might have hit somebody else, not physically, but emotionally, but me, it just didn't like sink in. And what I mean with this is the feeling of tingling. It just makes you feel something, it makes you happy, sad, melancholic, it makes you feel euphoric, whatever that is. That's what our track should make us feel. So if it still doesn't make you feel, you're gonna go back into your goal, you're gonna learn, 
trying to dissect it. You're gonna remove elements. You're trying to figure out what is it that is preventing you to feel stuff. And you're gonna go into the beginning or you can go into here and just learn. And you're gonna go into all these steps, circle it around until you're gonna be in this last point and you're gonna say, yes, it does make me feel. And congratulations, you have finished a track that you love. Let's go to my sessions and see how I actually follow this formula to finish a track that I actually love. Okay, so with Are You Okay, I started with just creating drums, bass, and some samples that I thought sounded really good. And because they sounded really good together, I went straight into arrangement view. But after a while listening to it, it just didn't feel if we look at this here, so I had the initial idea and I was like, yes, this sounds good together, yes. And I went into the production composition and I went here directly. So in just a couple hours, I went from the first section to second to the last. And I was like, no, no, it doesn't sound that great. So in this workflow, I kind of went into creating a second version of it. And then from there, I went all the way to the beginning, worked my way to the third one, and then all the way back. So I thought I kind of took the shortcut. It didn't work out. So let me show what happened. So this is the first version. In here, I have drums that I really, really like. They sound great. But then there was, for example, something like this clicky sound. It sounded good. But in the end, that didn't make up. Also, there was, for example, these bass sounds. I absolutely love those bass sounds. They are really big, cinematic. They have so much character, but somehow I felt like these should kind of fit into a different song. I needed to make a decision which sounds stay and which don't. Kill Your Darlings type of situation. Another bass, absolutely love it. Again, somehow it just didn't make the cut into the final version. So what I do with these samples is that I have my own sample library and I just bounce them into audio files. I can then just use it in another project in the future. So let's just listen a little bit from the beginning and I will show you the next session that end up being the final session and what changed in it. to listen now to this version it still sounds like the same song but it just feels so so different so i created a second version of it so what i did is go file and save a copy after that i went back into this section so mute track sounds but one by one I, I actually end up getting rid of almost everything else than just some of the melody ideas some chord ideas as well as drums and violin everything else i end up just taking away after that i kind of did this section together with this i started thinking about what is my goals my goals is actually to create a deep house track that is commercial but still very much me and my style. I wanted to find a balance and how can I combine those two together. So I decided first to go very commercial. I went online, search into different kind of deep house techniques. I went Spotify, listened to deep house music. I went to also Splice and just explored what kind of sounds and sound design people use in deep house. One sample that I found from Splice was this bass sample and I sliced it up and found this amazing sound, which then became my bass. So let's just listen to that. Mm -hmm. 
So it's very different style than actually the original that I just played, which was really cinematic and deep. This one is very short. It has a lot of color, a lot more rounder, more typical house bass. I layered that with a sub bass, just to add some depth. So this is octave lower. I also went in and added some chords. So basic synth chord progression that was very typical house chord progression. And what you can see is that that also complements the bass rhythm. These two together already made it sound a lot more commercial sound. I had a house beat, I had bass and chords that made it commercial. So then it was time for me to start thinking, how can I make it more me? <laughs> I asked my friend Sophie to record some saxophone and I made them super atmospheric and super big. And this is something that I really, really enjoyed. chords that I created here, the chord progression, sound a bit too clean and too electronic for me. So what I did is that I actually added Baby Audio Super VHS there. It adds amazing like a retro pitch shift effect into the chords. It was a little detail, but again, it shifted it from, I don't know if it can be too commercial, but it just became more me. And without them, and with the sound. Oof, I love that so much. Additionally, I wanted to add some other sounds that really I liked, which was example, this piano sound. And it's almost like a beautiful melancholic melody line that was just very me. And finally, something that really made it for me is that I absolutely love organic, very natural sounds. So I found this amazing thunder sound as well as rain sound. So in the C part or the bridge area, I have thunder and rain on the back of the whole area. So that's the thunder. And you can hear this rain, just almost like a white noise lift that brings it in. And I added also auto filter LFO to it to add this kind of amazing lift. And that also ends into just the thunder. Ooh, I love that so much. And finally, I added some vocals and I wanted to, again, find a balance between something that's commercial, not too poppy, not too synth pop, but more deep house vocals. And I've created these. I'm socially tired. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd rather move to the speed. And feel your, your, your Again, they were very me, but I could have taken them slightly more commercial to example, pitch shift them a little bit, stretch them, manipulate them, but I wanted to keep them very neutral for me. These are again, aesthetic choices between commercial and what is very house and what is me and finding that balance. I took all those sounds that I've added, which was kind of these three together. And I went all the way back here and continue producing, composing, developing the track. So what I did is actually rearrange it completely. And I think I created two or three different arrangements of it. And this took a little while. So as you can see here on the browser window, I go current project and you can see here 
is Are You Okay? and Cosmic Zone 1, Cosmic Zone Normal. So Cosmic Zone was the original name of the track and that was the different arrangement. And then we finally came to this arrangement, which ended up being the final one. In this point, then I was here where I was doing the arrangement, automation, transitions, tension, details, vocal details, and so on. So I was back in this area where I was already like a couple of weeks before uh, with the other version. And now I was really creating details for this. So example, I was doing the transitions a little bit more, adding these, FX, example these ones, little lifts and tension. So there's very cinematic explosions, there's swells, reverse symbols, and so on. I also added some white noise lift, so which is the easiest to do analog, some noise filter into it, audio filter. So I had a high pass filter and a low pass filter. I also have sidechain compression and a face flanger. And this is how it sounds. <laughs> Woo! So all these details was part of this part here. So in this part, I actually thought that, is this ready? So I said yes many, many times, but I kind of went back here and said, actually, maybe I should craft this a little bit longer. And then I said, yes, do I feel it yet? And I was like, oh, maybe I can do a tiny bit more emotion to it. And one emotion thing which made a massive change is the automation. Here, look at the automation. And this is filter automation on the saxophone. So what I've done is I've added this dynamic changes to the saxophone using auto filter. <laughs> What it does that it almost feels that the saxophone kind of opens up. It comes from somewhere far and it comes closer and then it goes away. And it does this movement throughout the song. And one of my favorite parts is here in the last chorus. You can see that I'm opening up a lot and you can really hear that it creates emotion to me because if it would be without the auto filter, it would sound like this. loud all throughout the saxophone and it's quite flat dynamically and now let's listen it with the automation another automation that i was fiddling around for a long, 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 long time was the volume and the filter of this rain on this bridge. So I was using this so long. How much do I want to hear it? Because I wanted to have a perfect balance to create the emotional feeling, but also that it's not too obvious on the front. So that took bloody ages that I was just like, ah, when is it ready? When does it feel enough? As I said, I went between this part as well as this part a long time. And finally I listened to it and I was like, does the track make you feel something? And I said, yes and it was ready. <laughs> we started from the initial idea, went all the way very fast to the end and realized that no, it's not working. And we started everything again, went back to the start and it was a month full of just that. Finally, I got into the end especially if you are starting up and you're still looking for these technical skills, this process can take even longer to figure out. But again, remember to be patient with yourself and with your learning process. There's nothing wrong about learning ever. Remember to check out Are You Okay from the link down below. 
as well as remember to check out Harmony Tracks generic charity competition from the link down below and take part in it so that you can win a pair of generic speakers. How freaking amazing is that? Remember to subscribe and also thank you so much for all my Patreon family, for all your support. The conversation continues in my Patreon Discord channel where the active, active, the most kindest community in audio industry is. And we also have challenges to enhance your creative confidence and your music production. So if you wanna learn more about all these kind of fun tricks to kind of get you to make more music, then that's the place for you. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe, have amazing creative time. See you later, bye.